Okay, so what we're going to talk about uh, today is uh, it's fall, and uh, you know we probably don't get the type of uh, color that you'd see up in the northeast or around the Great Lakes or the Rocky Mountains, but uh, we do have color here in uh, Cromwell County, and uh, you just have to kind of know what plants to look for and. Uh, and don't only think about trees, but you know, rather than focus your eyes up, maybe focus your eyes down and see things that are blooming or uh, smaller plants that are uh, turning color. Uh, this plant, let's see, okay, so let's get going here. Uh, this plant here actually, or this tree here is, is one that uh, is in, or was in our front yard of our home. It's a red maple. And normally red maples don't grow so well here, but if you can get some that are propagated in this area, you know, um, they have a tendency to survive. This one survived for 13 years, and uh, it uh, succumbed to the big freeze in 2021. And it was, it lost about 30%, uh, we only survived maybe about 30% of its uh, of foliage, and. Anyway, we ended up taking it out because it was uh, going to take a long time to recover if it ever, if it ever was going to recover. But anyway, uh, and that was a, the neat thing about the red maple is that um, you see color probably for about six months out of the year. In the fall, they turn yellow or, or red, and then when they lose their leaves, almost immediately they're, they're budding out the little fruits and all that stuff, and for like... Uh, probably five weeks, you're seeing that in January, and then the new leaves come out, and they're also red, and they hang out pretty much through the spring. So you get a lot of color with the uh, red maple. Now this is not the big tooth maple, this is, that's a separate. Good question, no, this is not the big tooth maple, but there is a big tooth maple right there. This is a, a young uh, big tooth maple that's in our arboretum that um, has a, uh, a kind of a, a yellowish color. And because of the weather patterns we get, and because they're so erratic, uh, on the maples, you don't really know what color you're gonna get when you fly it. A lot of it depends upon your soil and the weather conditions. But once it, you, you determine it, if it has a red color or a yellow color, then the weather will adjust the tone of that and the intensity of that color. But it won't go from yellow to red though, something like that. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, why plants turn colors in the fall. And here we're talking about deciduous plants and uh, their leaves. And then we'll also uh, talk about uh, where to look for the color in Cornwall County in terms of what plants to look for. And uh, then we'll uh, talk about uh, locations around Cornwall County where you can see lots of bursts of color that you can kind of visit, hike to, or just drive to. Okay, so fall is here. Days are getting cooler. Weather's uh, nice in the evening. It's a good time to uh, kind of go outside and enjoy the color that's around here. You know, we're, we're gonna be looking at annuals through uh, uh, large uh, trees that uh, either bloom or have color in their leaves. Okay, so why do plants turn color in the fall? Well, it has something to do with the temperatures that as the uh, temperatures drop and we have shorter uh, sunlight, then we're also going to end up getting less chlorophyll uh, uh, period. Uh, and chlorophyll is what kind of provides the green inside the leaves. And as that breaks down, what we're getting are yellows and oranges pigments that begin to appear that have always been there, but the chlorophyll green color pigment dominates, okay? So we're starting to lose that when we don't get as much uh, happening with the exchange of photosynthesis with the uh, sun there. So then, in addition, if uh, you, you have the potential for reds, not only are existing pigments are beginning to uh, uh, show up, but we end up having uh, chemical changes taking place and uh, some of the sugars are being trapped in the leaves and uh, 
they actually, what happens is as the plant or the trees are getting ready to uh, make it through dormancy in the winter time, then the fluids that are uh, in the leaves and the nutrients and all the sugars, okay, they, the tree itself starts drawing those out, okay, to survive and help with the dormancy. And then they no longer leave, leave those in the uh, leaves, but there is some sugars that are trapped because the, the plant is actually starting to seal off that leaf and uh, away from its branches. And so it does leave some pigments in there. And then that's what, where this chemical change happens. And I think there's a word for it. Debbie, our resident biologist, <coughs> and, uh, help me with this. Uh, what is it called? Uh, that, uh, uh, anthrocyanids or? Anthrocyanids. Anthrocyanids, there she goes. Yeah, Debbie's a botanist. <laughs> okay. But that's what causes the chemical change that works off of the, uh, the sugars in the, uh, the leaves there. And so uh, after a while, the, uh, the fluids are sealed off. And of course, some of those uh, sugars are trapped in the leaves. And the other branches, okay, sort of cut off. And there's no more fluid exchange happening now. And eventually that uh, breaks off the leaf and the leaf drops off. If that didn't happen and the leaves were still around and, and brown like they are and all, that would make the plant more susceptible to cold weather. So it's a defense mechanism. Uh, now, uh, depending upon the weather conditions and the type of uh, uh, plant it is, for example, oaks, particularly the southern sugar oaks that come to mind and other um, maples, uh, not I'm sorry, the southern sugar maples and some red oaks, their leaves will turn color like now, but they won't drop their leaves for some reason until February. But they're still going to be brown. So anyway, that's what's kind of happening back there. Debbie, you have anything to add to that discussion? Okay. There? <laughs> oh, she gives me a thumbs up. All right, great. And of course, the best colors are when it's dry and sunny and cool. Uh, and how long the, the leaves stay on also uh, is dependent upon are we getting a lot of uh, heavy rains and winds that will blow these things off as well. So it's very weather dependent how long they stay. Okay, so if you know where to look, um, so, um, you know, our collars again aren't going to be uh, as big and massive as uh, up north, but uh, we do have some here if you, you kind of know where to look physically. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is um, talk about um, some uh, plants, and we're going to start with sort of the annuals and work our way up to trees. Uh, and then also we'll talk about where you're going to see them in your own backyard, right, in uh, public uh, parks or demonstration gardens around Como County or some that are managed by the city of New Braunfels or state parks or even nonprofits that even we get involved with ourselves. <clears throat> and of course, uh, along rivers and streams and waterways, you're going to see a lot of diversity of uh, plants and trees. And that's where you also see a lot of color. In fact, if you're up high, uh, or either flying around or something like that, your eyes are drawn to colors at this time, and typically that's kind of long rivers and streams. Okay, so we're going to do kind of like a little Jeopardy game here, okay? Um, I'm going to show you uh, photos of plants, okay? And I, and I want you guys to interact here, because it'll, be, it'll be worth your while, believe me. Um, and I want you to, you don't necessarily have to, I'll give you the uh, picture, uh, and you don't have to respond with uh, that is, or you know, kind of, uh, or I think that is. But just respond with, and you guys are like the experts. I mean, I'm talking to the choir here, so you guys should be able to guess these plants pretty well. So uh, first, we're going to show you photos of uh, annuals or uh, biannuals or either short-lived uh, perennials. Okay, so let's go with the first one here. What is this plant Snow on the here? Mountain. What is this? Snow on the mountain. That is correct. Who said that first? Yeah. We said it together. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, I need somebody to help give our gifts. 
several years behind here. Oh, wow. Here we go. I've got to up my game. Well, you guys are so lucky because Sarah's son, Brandon, isn't here. He, he would embarrass all of us. He healed all the plants. And of course, he's quicker than us, too. Okay, that is correct. Go of the mountain. So what I'm going to show you, after I show you the, the picture and the answer, you'll see what the name is, what the scientific name, and then I'm just going to have a, the uh, person who actually made this photo. A lot of the photos, though, come from our arboretum. Okay, next one. What is this plant? It's a nice one. Duranta. Duranta. Duranta it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to let you take out this thing. <laughs> All right, that is correct. Yes. Yeah, not Durant. You know, uh, God, in my younger days when I, anyway, I'm not going to talk about what you can find with the root and do with the root of this plant. <laughs> okay, how about this one? Now, this is uh, one of those difficult ones because uh, it's what we call a composite. Uh, yellow flowery plant here. Mm -hmm. Didn't say the first word. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> People on Zoom can guess too, just uh, type in or whatever. So, you know, it's got a nice uh, flower, about uh, six uh, or eight petals there. The inside of the flower is uh, kind of a red. I'm sorry, nobody gets a gift. <laughs> <laughs> this plant is bitterweed. Okay, all right. Next plant. Here we go. Oh, blue curl. No. Blue eyed grass? Blue bells. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, next plant. Let's see. Okay, yes, blue bells. Next plant. Oh, another one of those uh, yellow ones there. Oh, oh, you should be able to get this one there. No. Look at the Black inside of uh, the center of the plant. Black eyed Susan. Yeah, good guy. Okay. Picture's wrong, you think? <laughs> okay. Next one. Prairie verbena. Yes, prairie oh, verbena. Yeah. That's correct. Oh, now we get the pen. <laughs> Next one is another yellow plant. Green thread. Who said that? Me. God, I didn't think anybody was going to get that. What is that? That's good. Cool. Right. <laughs> green thread. It's all over my yard. Yeah, that's green. Yeah, that's green. Yeah, that's green. <laughs> so, again, these are plants that, uh, uh, for the most part, are going to bloom from uh, as early as the summer, sometimes even in the spring, but all the way through the fall. Mm -hmm. So, they will be here now. And again, our crazy weather, you know, with the drought and the freeze and all, that's kind of upset the patterns a little bit. But generally, these plants are all going to be around in the fall. 
Okay, next one. A tropical sage. Who said that? Which wow, one? that is correct. That Which is one? Good. Which one? Tropical right? sage. Okay, that's it for the annuals. Let's look at some perennials now. Next one coming up, you're all going to get immediately. Well, it is fall too. And again, you know, this, this little quiz is easy because first, I've already told you that we're going to only be dealing with things that have color in the fall, right? And then I've also said this is the habitat or the, the, the plant type, annual, perennial, whatever, you know, it's vine or whatever. And uh, of course, uh, even this one has the name of fall. So, you know, <laughs> it should be pretty easy. And you guys are experts at it. Okay, <laughs> let's see. All right, next one. White mist flower. Yeah, white mist flower. Or what's that? Bone Strawberry bone set is another name for it. Correct. Yes. Okay, here's another one that uh, I think you'll also guess at the same time. All obedient plants. Yes. That's good. We're going to beat you up after class, Dave. Okay, more perennials. Here we go. Greg's Miss Farm. Yes. All right. It's covered in clothes. Yeah, I, I, I guess the uh, butterflies here kind of give that away. But you know, this is the plant, you know, that when people are doing surveys of, of uh, butterflies, you don't have to walk around and, and go find butterflies. You just get a chair and sit next to this plant and it'll come to you. I call it butterfly cocaine. Yes. <laughs> butterfly cocaine, yes. <laughs> This plant? Lindheimer Cilla? Yes, Lindheimer Cilla, which is going to be one of our 2004 nice plants. Lindheimer Cilla. Also named after the guy that we named our chapter after. Lindheimer. Okay, next one. Gara? Yes. White Gara. This also is going to be a 2004 nice plant in the fall. Okay, we're going to come with grasses. But see, grasses are hard to figure out what they are. But in the fall, it's their seed heads that you can determine one from the other. Okay, here comes one that is the fall grass plant of any grass plant. Gulf Muley. Gulf Muley, yeah. This thing backlit with the sun, it's just so striking. Gulf Muley. Are you sure? I think I tied some of that. That's okay. I'm going to get you guys all sugared up, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's For those of you in the Zoom meeting, I apologize, but when they get the right answers, they're getting gifts. <laughs> yum, yum. Okay, next one. This is a little difficult to see, I guess. Well, but we're, we're talking about the plant here in the front. Indian grass? Indian grass, correct. Yes. And behind it, there's some, um, looks like uh, frostweed. There's some frostweed behind it, as well as um, some uh, uh, Lindhammer muley as well in the background, which has kind of a nice white color or silver color to it. Okay, uh, here's a little more close up of the Indian grass. Uh, this frost is the weed. frost weed yeah. right? that's in the background. You know, I get calls from my neighborhood all the time when people uh, ask, there's something happening to my plants. It's like, I don't know, it's like exploding or something like that. And this is what the plant normally does at the first frost. It looks like perfect little icicles and things. That's why it's called a frost weed. It's a milkweed, by the way, and very important to uh, uh, mon monarch butterflies on their journey through here. It's not a milk. It, it's an aster. I think it's a milk. Uh, no. no, it's just a place where they what? It's they nectar. love it. They love the nectar. The nectar in the fall. Okay. Yeah, it's very important for the fall migration because yeah. of the nectar. Important for the fall mo migration. Migration. Hey, Does it hurt to cut those down? Uh, right? They'll come back. They'll come back, so they don't have to go through any yeah, process. They are perennial. They are tough. Okay. 
Right. Of course, uh, even if they didn't come back, and all the birds they visit, your oak trees and things, they're going to replant them anyway. Okay, this, this final uh, photo at the bottom is also the uh, Linhama mule. That's blooming. Not blooming or seed pots. Okay, more grass is coming up. What is this? What was, the, what was that? Little blue stem. Little blue stem, correct. Yeah. I don't even know. I thought I'd, here, here's a close up of the blue, little blue stem in this photo here. Little blue stem. Okay, how about this one? I'll give you a hint. It's its cousin. Bushy blue stem. Bushy blue stem. Now called mariner blue stem. Ah, mariner? Okay. They changed the name. You know you're near water, okay, because this is where they grow, around uh, the bogs and uh, the areas near uh, riparian areas. This is near one of the ponds we have on our, our arboretum. And this is another close-up of its uh, seed head and, and flower blooming. And another close-up of it. Again, the bushy uh, blue stem. Okay. Let's look at some vines now that are going to be blooming in the fall. Alamo. Alamo vine. Very good. Okay. I like somebody over here. I like this one. Ooh, pretty. Is that the uh, Virginia, Virginia creeper? Who said that? Yeah. Oh my God, you're so right. Yes. That's what it is. It is pretty awesome, isn't it? Look at that color. Next one? Yeah. Oh, Clementus, leather, 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 yes. Yeah, the, uh, the leather flower, purple <laughs> leather flower. Okay, this one. Is that bendweed? It uh, used to be on our uh, chapter's uh, Lindheimer logo. Lindheimer Morning Glory? Yes, Lindheimer Morning Glory. Okay. This one. Pearl milkweed. Who said that? You're right. Uh, layer reticulata. Yeah, you, yeah, you can actually see the little bit of the pearl right here. Right there. But it's kind of there for the fall color. Very I'm good. I see the yellow. So, so it turns yellow. Yeah, kind of yellow, yellow green yellow. lime yeah. color. Okay. Yeah. So there's a little pearl right, right here. See it? Right in the middle. This one. Passion. Passion, Passion flower. Who said that in the back? Here. It's the park. That's, that's in fact, plan. this is their plant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to look at shrubs. So a little bit higher here. Here's one that everybody's going to probably guess pretty quickly. That's right. Look at you guys also say the Spanish name there too. Wow, versus yellow bells. Oh. <laughs> you guys know your plants. Okay, here's another one that uh, you'll probably guess real quickly, because nothing looks like this. It's unique. <laughs> beauty berry. American, beauty berry. American beauty berry, correct. You know, these things are edible. I tried eating some of mine the other day, and that's the last time I'll ever do that. It doesn't taste, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't taste like anything, but birds love it. You know? I, I hear it, it needs a lot of sugar to make it my berries didn't last. How about this one? Sinizo. Sinizo, correct. Or uh, Texas sage. This is one that Colin says. Uh, I lost my internet connection here for my music because you guys aren't going to It's not possible? It is not. Mm. No. I'll just sing it. <laughs> okay, this one is a Harthon, Tracy Harthon. Not one you see too much in the nurseries, but it's endemic to uh, this area in Central Texas. Tracy Harthon, and it's a uh, kind of got little berries now. Uh, this one? Flame Acanthus? Flame Acanthus it is. That is correct. Okay, this one. 
Poverty oh, wow. wow. Gosh, yeah, that's true. The, the plant that nobody wants. Because <laughs> hey, it's pretty aggressive. My HOA is banned here. I like mine. There's always white butterflies on it in the time. We're, I want, I want we're, we're living in Wagner Ranch. It's taken over Wagner Ranch along the roadside. Everywhere. You cut it back hard, it makes a nice, bushier form. Oh, okay. It's a lot more attractive than when it gets real long and leggy. So right. after it's done blooming, you can cut it back to like maybe a foot or two tall, and it'll fill out as a bushier bush and just look all the natives. For those on Zoom, uh, Sarah's saying is you can cut this back and it'll make a much bushier plant. But right now, it's it's got its best color packing it down, the right flowers. Has anybody tried to propagate it? Oh, I don't think you have to. It'll propagate itself. The cross is sweet for me, but I don't have any. I'm going to go Oh, you just It'll eventually make it to your place. You don't even have to do it. <laughs> okay, now we're going to look at some small trees. Okay, so... That's going to give you a little tip that it won't be the big trees, the smaller trees. Uh, this is going to probably be one of my favorite uh, small shrubs and understory trees coming up. That's the possum hog. Possum hog, they there say. Yeah. This is uh, very much like its cousin down below, which is the yopon, because they both have the, the red berries during the uh, uh, fall and the winter, and uh, birds just love these things. You know, and uh, it's probably the only red color you're going to see out there mm -hmm. in the winter time. Until the cedar so, whack winds mi migrate in and strip the berries away. Yes? My understanding is there male and female possum moths? Yes. yes. And so we found yes. our males this year because you can't propagate them right now. Mm -hmm. So I, we tied we tied tape on them yeah. so that next spring I can start cutting and seeing if I can propagate them. You know, um, most of the nurseries are going to be selling the females because of the berry colors. And i found that there's so many males around, you may not notice them, but uh, they'll be near and you probably don't have to get them by a male. You know, so don't even try to look for them. I think they're just going to uh, be in the area and they'll take care of making sure you get a lot of berries. So Leon, you're saying even if you don't buy it in the fall so that you see the berries to know it's a female, that they're mostly female in the, in the nursery? In the nursery trade, trade yes, they are. Oh. Yeah. Reputable, yeah. okay, yeah. suppliers who are reputably selling to reputable you know, retail outlets, yeah. Okay. I'm not they're, saying, you know. Not never. <laughs> not never, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the, uh, the time I, I wanted to plant a uh, an Arizona uh, cypress, and the label said this was an Arizona cypress. So I planted it, you know, and put it in the ground and got this nice column shape initially. Continues to have a column shape. And I finally realized, yeah, it's an Italian cypress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. The, the possum hog, is it pollinated by insects or is it, a, is it air or like the I think air. junipers? I think air, but I'm not 100% sure. Debbie, you, you know? I, I don't, but the flowers are tiny, so my bet is air. it's wind. It's interesting how nature pollinates itself, either by wind or depending upon insects and all, but as Debbie just mentioned, you can almost look at its structure, you know, and figure out, oh, wait a minute, you know, you know. I mean, look at the maples that have these, uh, what do you call it, semis or something? Or, that are like helicopters when they come down from the trees and take off in the wind. Okay, next one, also a red plant. Flaming sumac. That is correct, Flames, flame leaf sumac. There's a close-up of kind of berries on it. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably not going to guess this one. <laughs> this is one of the only flowering trees in the fall. Not by leaves, but just by its flowers. Okay. Is it close-up? Here we go. It's a close-up of the flower. Does that make a difference? This is an endemic plant that you will find out, but they're kind of rarely seen. This is a witch hazel. Is it deer market or something? Oh no, not. I, I have mine caged, you know, but they don't seem to mess with it in terms of eating it. And if the leaves or the branches or now mine is above browns, browse level, but if the branches are low, they would tear it up. The males would. 
Okay, we're still going to be on small trees. How about this one for color, huh? Kind of look at the leaf structure there. And this is kind of more of a bushy uh, photo version. Most of, most of the time it's a multi trunk tree about uh, 12 feet high. Here's a little close up of it. Yeah, the Mexican buckeye. Mexican buckeye. You guys are, you guys are good. Are we running out of gifts? <laughs> okay, here is another one. Here's a close up of it. Kind of waxy leaves. Close. What did you say the first word? Escarpment? No, first word. Black. 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 All right. Next word. Black Next word. Next word. Black wallet. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty Blackhawk. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. This is a multi question one here. Okay. So. So, um, well, actually, these are actually three trees right here. One, two, three here. Okay. Uh, I will tell you that um, they're in the Quercus family of trees. Does that ring a bell to anybody? No, oaks. They're oaks. Are they Lacey Oaks? Here's a poster. Yeah, Lacey Oaks. Got it. Well, Lacey I, Oaks. I, I just had a discussion with you about your three Lacey Oaks at your house, and you said there was three, so I just... Oh. There they are. Yeah, these are. <laughs> mine, mine are probably at their maturity now. They're about 15 years old, and they're only about 20 feet tall. But considering I have thin soil, that's probably about the tallest I'm going to get. But in ideal conditions, they can get as, as tall as 60 feet. Yeah. Sometimes they're called blue oaks because of their color in the summertime. It kind of turns a grayish green. <clears throat> and then. Uh, and other times they almost look kind of smoky tall from the distance for the, for the world. This is a great plant to use or tree if you have a small yard or something like that. Okay, what do we have next? Oh, canopy trees. Now we're getting to the big ones. Okay. What is this plant here? What was that? Cedar. Cedar Island. You're up to that. Here's a close up of the leaves. Now, this year in Comel County, we're not seeing the bright golden color of cedar elms because they kind of took a hit from the freeze and the drought and all that, and it's kind of affected it. But normally, you know, the big, if it isn't an escarpment cherry or it's not a um, walnut that you see in the distance of the yellow color, it's going to be the cedar elm. And, and that's probably one of the most uh, prominent uh, trees in our Comel County next to the ash juniper and the escarpment live oaks. Okay, here's another one. Here's a close up of it. It's got multicolored leaves. It is endemic to our state. And its name actually is the same, it, part of its name is uh, the state of Texas. Persimmon. Texas ash. Beautiful plant. Uh, it's got a nice silver trunk to it. Uh, well mannered. Texas ash. Okay, here's another one. And a lot of these plants here, again, are from our arboretum, the photos. Here's a close up of the leaf. Who said sycamore? You are correct. Now I'll ask you a little more deeper question. Is it an American I think or, it's Mexican. or a Mexican? I think it's a Mexican, but I'm not sure. You're half right, because this particular one is a hybrid between <laughs> the American <laughs> and the Mexican. Mexican. It's Mexican. Yeah. So uh, I, again, I bought this one thinking it was a, a Mexican, okay? But after it grew and I started looking at the leaf structure, I found out that, hey, it's a hybrid of, and we have uh, several pure Mexican and several Americans, and this one's different. 
It's just a combination of those two, but not because of those that, that, that are their neighbors. It's just like you were, how they were selling it, it, but it was actually a hybrid. And so um, um, you'll also see yellows uh, in um, Carolina buckthorns as well, and chickapin oaks will turn yellow nice. also. More canopy trees. Okay, this is a shot of our arboretum, and uh, I want you to guess what this plant is right here, or this tree. Your pointer, we don't see your pointer. Yeah. You don't see the pointer? Yeah. No. no. Okay. I guess the people on Zoom don't see it either, I don't know, but this one, this one, this one, and this one. So let's look at the first one on, the le on your left. Which one is that? Red oak. Uh, actually, there is a red oak that would be over here. This is a red oak. <laughs> okay, okay um, more guesses. What is this plant all the way to the left in the photo? That's called, it's got a little red, a little yellow to it. A little chartreuse. It's a tree. It's a, Maple, maple, yes. Okay. And it's a, what kind of maple? Big tooth. Big, big tooth, yes. <laughs> big tooth. Yeah. 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 Okay, and uh, the plant in the middle, over here to the right of that one, is what? It's actually the big tooth's cousin. Big tooth is really a uh, sugar maple, and its cousin is a southern sugar maple. They do equally well here in Comel County. And uh, anyway, it's a southern sugar maple. And uh, the one over here, to the right of that one, is in fact its brother or sister. That's also a big tooth maple. And then here in the foreground, what is this tree here? Cypress. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've probably told this story to you guys before, but this hole here was the first hole I dug when we purchased our house 12 years ago. And it took me like three hours to dig that hole because <laughs> I was using a tool that didn't work here anymore, I used to shovel. <laughs> and I put a red bud in there and the red bud died because all I did was build a hole that was a bowl that trapped water. And the uh, red bud doesn't like its feet to be wet, so it died about a year later. I told my wife, Becky, hey, I got too much sweat equity in this hole. We gotta put something in. <laughs> so a ball of cypress. And a ball of cypress can handle water, it can handle droughts, it can handle extremes of uh, uh, soil moisture. Okay. So this is just another close up of uh, a big tooth. This is the big tooth's uh, leaves a little close up, even closer up. Uh, another, this is the southern sugar maple. And then, of course, this is the, uh, the fruit of the uh, ball of cypress. Do you guys know why a ball of cypress sometimes has cypress knees? They'll occur when the cypress is mostly uh, underwater. in water all the time, and it's a way of it getting oxygen. And, oh, up in the corner here, uh, coming up is uh, again another shot of uh, that uh, red maple I was telling you about in the beginning of the presentation. Look how the color was different. If you remember, it was yellow before and kind of it toned out to a little reddish just because of weather conditions. More canopy trees coming up. Actually, this is the final one and um, now would be a good time to check out the little uh, numbers you picked up coming in, the door price. Right you will be the owner of this real <laughs> red maple that actually red oak, really red has oak. some red colors on it already. Red oak. Red oak, I'm sorry, not red maple. For those of you uh, in the audience here. So, Cheryl, what? Red leaves on. Sarah, why don't you have somebody pick out the... Oh, yeah. Can... So this will be our door prize.
choose. Bob will pick it out. He's an honest guy. <laughs> what should be his number? <laughs> <laughs> okay, number eight seven five seven four. Four. <laughs> That's the number to call. Just oh. four. <laughs> Oh, we have a winner. I think so. I know. So again, 875744. Correct. She's the winner. All right. We have a victory. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay, now we're going to go to the part where we show where physically in Como County we'll find some of the color. Again, in your own landscape, look in your backyard, in the public parks and demonstration gardens, near water. Okay, Landa Park, great place to go. They have about a, a one and a half mile trail of about 80 species of uh, trees. Um, and they're very mature trees. And there's one tree, although it doesn't turn color, but it's called the Founders Oak. And it's over 320 years old. In fact, I picked up some of acorns a few weeks ago and I'm trying to propagate. So it'll live on even longer. Longer than I will, I'm sure. Okay. Headwaters of the Comal. All right. So this is a, 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 a place that's owned by the New Braunfels Utilities Company, which is owned by the city of uh, Comal. And it's a, it's a, a like a world renowned or will be restoration project going on because this all used to be blacktop. Yes? Also, you can go to their website and they have work days, and some of the work days are um, collecting fall seeds, and when you get to bring some home. So if you're looking for stuff, you can collect seeds collect and bring seeds. them home. And you need glasses yeah. too. Glasses on and Glasses, home. yes. And um, actually, next uh, fall, we're going to hold our NLCP or our Native uh, Landscaping Certification class at their new buildings which are being built now just for us. <laughs> just for us. Okay. Yes. Question? I wanted to know where that was in town, the headwaters. Uh, it is it's on, on Cleanman at the very, it is the headwaters. Uh, probably about a mile from Landa Park. Lakeview and... Lakeview. Got a little video for you. This one spot right here affects all of Texas. Too loud? Yes. Or no, it's just uh, buffering, I guess. Slow internet connection. Well, that's a beautiful shot of the headwaters. <laughs> yeah, this is actually the headwaters. <laughs> Correct. Water comes out of here, and then it flows into the Comal. This is the beginning of the Comal. What was there before? Uh, New Braunfels Utility Company. Oh, yeah. So they had a waterworks on the property, and I believe they still do. Still do. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were using the in. property as their maintenance yard for their trucks. And so they had a lot of blacktop and all that runoff. So the restoration project's amazing because it's got berms and swales to keep any runoff from hitting the beautiful, clean Comal River. So. Okay, so. Um, we're having a tough um, internet connection here, so we're going to pass on this for right now. Okay, here is some sh let's shot of, yes, okay. This is the Guadalupe River. This is kind of upstream of Canyon Lake. Great color there. You should visit this if you can. And adjacent to the uh, Guadalupe River State Park mm -hmm. is the the Honey Creek Natural or State Natural Area, and uh, if you look at these photos here, and particularly the one on the lower right, you may see somebody that uh, you recognize. Because <laughs> we did a field trip there a couple of years ago as well. And another neat thing about that is south of the uh, State Natural Area, there's a place called uh, the uh, uh, Honey Creek Ranch. It has hundreds of acres that have recently been uh, uh, become a uh, uh, cons conservation easement. So it was no sold to Texas Parks and Wildlife. Actually, it's going to become a state park. 
Oh. But in the beginning, uh, our chapter got to do a small time plant rescue there, uh, which was a lot of fun. I think Bob got to go and a couple others. Um, I know the family who owned it. Um, so they were happy to let us come in. Yeah, so for future generations and generations, they're going to be able to see what we see. Yes. Yeah. To, to go to the Honey Creek Natural Area, you need to go with a group, right? Yes, it's you need to go with a group, and uh, they usually have uh, every Saturday mornings a uh, special uh, tour that you sign mm -hmm. up for, because you just can't go there, and you have to have a reservation. Very nice area, though. And there's actually some caves there that are on the properties. Really neat. Okay, here's a place that you probably have passed up quite a bit yourself. This is a uh, Flame Leaf Sumax on Bullberry Crossing at 281. Right before you get to Home Depot or across the street, uh, coming up to the uh, Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union, right? I drove by the other day and I was worried they were Chinese pistache. I know. <laughs> I'm just happy to know this. Okay, and then a little further uh, downstream of the Canyon Lake here, we have the, uh, at 281 and 311, uh, we have uh, some of these shots of uh, the Guadalupe River. The small one on the right is uh, near the uh, uh, Hujo uh, Springs Road, so a small pond there in, in the neighborhood. That's actually a private pond. Uh, and uh, I mean, if you just, walked out or drove straight out of uh, the uh, entrance to the library here, there's some uh, trails that are on the other side of the uh, ballparks there on both sides of the outlet of the uh, dam there that are just great things to look at um, in terms of color. Uh, and then also uh, if you were to walk out the door this way to the right, there's a wonderful butterfly garden that uh, Susan Bobo and her uh, uh, volunteers maintain. We volunteer, the master gardeners of Colmel County volunteer there, master naturalists do. It's a, it's a beautiful garden right here on the library property. And if you go a little further and down to the left on 306 near uh, the Colmel Park, there is the Moon Lagoon Trail. And there is a, uh, a park there, a pollination park on Mon uh, Madrone Trail that was just dedicated uh, this past October. Well, in, in the shape of the walking trails around the park is a, is a huge butterfly. You, you can't see that when you're walking on it, but from a visual view, it's the outline of a butterfly. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. Lots of color there, potentially, in, 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 in the years as, as it gets more mature. Be really nice. Okay, the next one here is kind of going to be a little bit of a stretch, but uh, if you just go to the right nearby us is the uh, Canyon Lake Gorge. And uh, this is a shot of the gorge uh, on the left, uh, the color of the uh, lagoons there. And then I know it's a stretch, but uh, it is fall, and these are waterfalls, so I included that. <laughs> there are some, you know, bushy blue stem, I think, uh, is right there in the foreground there. And then, of course, all the way to the left is uh, a view of the falling sunset <laughs> from uh, Overlook Park, which is you go to the left of us over here, take a right, and go up to the Overlook there, you'll see this. So, and then we also have uh, some uh, privately kind of managed parks. We have the Lindheimer Master Gardener or Master Naturalist uh, Arboretum which is right near the uh, AgriLife, uh, uh, AgriLife uh, Off 46, uh, the offices there. You know where the recycling uh, place is? Mm -hmm. Well, behind that is where the Master Naturalists uh, congregate. And behind that office there is uh, this uh, small arboretum of about 30 species of uh, plants and trees, mostly trees that uh, are uh, well-maintained, but the Master Naturalists also have a pollinator garden all around their uh, office there. And then of course I just mentioned the uh, Madrone uh, Trail, a uh, great place to go. And then finally uh, uh, you may recognize this one down below. This is the Todd Preston 
butterfly garden just a few feet away from us. And of course, there's the Dominic Arboretum that uh, has its uh, colorful trees as well. And uh, sometimes we have uh, private tours in the fall and the spring. Uh, and uh, we invite people. So if anybody wants to have a tour, we'll schedule you in uh, for this spring if you want. We didn't have any this fall because I just didn't feel right because of the, uh, the freeze and uh, the damages and the stress of the trees. It, it just doesn't look that great right now. It's recovering, but by the spring, it'll look really good. It's Question? also a tentative field trip for next year's fall symposium. That is correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So, thank you. Great audience, smart audience too. <laughs>